What's good, Internet? It is Friday, January 15th, and you are listening to Waypoint Radio, episode 371. I cannot believe we are already halfway through January. I'm your host, Austin Walker. I'm joined today by Ricardo Contreras. <laughs> I thought you were going to say half through. Uh, my brain went halfway through the year. It's been half a year nope. already since nope. fucking 2021 I mean, it has started. 13 Sentinels? Did I fall into this? Yeah. Yeah. We jumped ahead, Patrick. Uh, things got worse. Look outside your window. Uh-oh. Oh, that wow. was Patrick Klepek. Also here with us, Rob. Yeah, I, I, hope, I, I hope this is acceptable with my uh, non-fancy lighting, Austin. I know recently you got to see me. I did. Uh, beautifully. Pe- Lit in my office, and can we? Uh, I don't think we can talk about no, why. We can't, but we can't say why. You just saw me beautifully lit. Um, I just saw Patrick, be- uh, like hundreds of dollars of lighting equipment, five five hundred and eighty nine dollars of lighting equipment, um, including one of which was, in theory, it's a tripod, mm. um, but it was a uh, I don't know what do you what's it what's just two like a it was a, a tripod. tripod. <laughs> uh, I had to. There was normally you would put a, a, a light that is meant to you know light your face you know a decent uh, distance behind you. There is no, yeah. there was just a wall. Mm-hmm. And so I had a tripod that was leaning off against the wall and then the light was tilted down. And then also <laughs> I had to like loosen it so it could go all the way to the ceiling so that it could get enough distance that it didn't actually look like a light. You was were like completely blown out. Yeah. You're holding a yeah. lamp above your head. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I had, um, a war- I had a warn somebody like, so if there's, if something crashes on me, I don't think it's likely, but it's at least like within the realm of possibility that a light will fall on me in the next 45 minutes. <laughs> it was good. The lighting See, was good. This, this is why this is a union trade. Uh, really, <laughs> right. if you do not want to be killed by uh, either electrocution or hundreds of pounds of lighting equipment falling on you, um, hire somebody who's you need a best uh, boy who's got their card. Yeah. Yeah. Now, granted, that was that was offered to me that there could be someone that could come, <laughs> but I I said no to it because of the COVID and my mom. So right, it was like right, I will. Right. It was offered to have a a, a competent human being <laughs> set these lights up, and I said no. Just draw me a diagram in MS Paint, and I'll figure it out. That's fucking wild. I guess that they probably just have people in the area that they can call. Is that how? Yeah, they were just like, I don't know. We'll find someone in in Chicago. uh, There's definitely freelancers that are just, you know, whatever job comes along in every state, you know? Yeah. Yeah, totally. Uh, How's everyone doing? Are we all glad this week is over? We made it through another one. Uh, I guess uh, top, top of the top of the morning business. Uh, we will not be here on Monday, right? Monday right. is off. Is that true? Yes. Yep. Um, so so look forward to not hearing us <laughs> in a few days. And we'll be back at the end of the week. Um, anyone anyone get up to anything this week? I know we're, we're still kind of in that period where we have a lot of free time because there's no new releases. We can kind of revisit old stuff. We can kind of... Bro, I, can we in. just got come on. Just can we just just get, let's go to, go to Rob. I want to. I've heard the uh, private yeah. adventures of Rob Zach, and I want to hear him. Um, I've heard none uh, of say this. them publicly. All all when Rob told us what he had, the thing he told us was Rob's week of streaming games. <laughs> hmm. Rob. Yeah. Okay. So you know how I've had recurring issues with my PC for about two years. Like every six months, I'm like, "Hey, my PC yes. is randomly hard locking." <laughs> yes. And In fact, I recall I recall recording an episode of our Star Wars podcast the other day, a uh, more civilized <laughs> age, uh, and you just we lost you for 25 minutes as your computer just finally shit the bed. Yeah, that was actually the last time I used it for anything. Uh, that oh, was the moment where I was like, this is now unusable. Oh, uh, no. Because it's one of those things where it has always been doing random hard locks for a long time. And just like, but in waves, right? Like every time I've gone through a decent amount of troubleshooting, the problem, Michigan J frogs its way out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> and stops happening now for <laughs> young people. There was a very popular cartoon where there's like a you know dead frog that you dissect, but like this frog would stand up and start singing "Hello, my honey, hello, my darling." Um, we watched it when we were kids. We loved it. Um, but whenever anybody all. came around, it just went back to being a regular frog that sat there. Right. There was always was like, one we- person, one poor right. schmuck who yeah. like was aware that this frog was a miraculous like being, and then everyone else just saw a dead frog. Um, right. Anyway. That's kind of what this problem was, where every time I would start really trying to do the process of narrowing down what the hell was happening, it would completely disappear. And so at various points, I was convinced that uh, 
it was a bad uninterruptible power supply. Uh, so I replaced that and the problem went away for six months and then it came back and then I just reduced my overclock and it stopped happening for like another Ooh. six months mm. and then it came back. Um, then there were a bunch of hardware changes I made and it stopped again and now it, but this time the overclock, basically I, I had to un overclock the PC. It was still happening and it's one of those things where I think if I had a test bench PC where you could swap in like one part to test it and you know the machine's good other than that, this would probably take like an afternoon to diagnose. But just trying to do it with the PC that has like any number of these possible faults is a nightmare. And I just sort of hit a point where I was like, this processor's old as hell. This motherboard's mm. pretty old. I'm just like, the PC is unusable. This is, it's time. Um, and then I discovered something else, which is that this is not a good time to build a PC. <laughs> um, oh, because the, in, the things that you know you want are not available. Right. Um, basically, everything is a 3080 now, uh, right. which is to say everything is in such high demand that uh, like hoarders are basically taking the stuff and selling it on the secondary market. And that's really hit. CPUs hard, especially because right now I had I had been aware that AMD had like closed the gap with Intel. Oh. I was unaware that they basically blown Intel's doors off. Yeah. People, um, people love those Ryzen's. Yeah. And I mean, I get, I get why. I guess like Intel has sort of stayed on an old fabrication process. Um, and so they have just older tech mm. and Ryzen has rolled out a new one in addition to new system architecture, and apparently it just crushes the Intel. So Intel is there trying to make up the gap by basically throwing more power and heat through the CPU, mm. which, uh, I, like, having just gone Giving through this, problems, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I don't, I don't know that that sounds good. Uh, so, like, Intel's you can, you can get. You can get any Intel you want. They're shooting it out of a Canon, like, T-shirt. Yeah. Um, <laughs> If you want wow. one of them, I would them not Ryzen's, want to be in that arena. That would be very <laughs> painful. I don't know. I, I suppose if you're a Bitcoin miner, though, that'd be a good arena to be in. Be like, woo! Yeah, over here, Intel, love 14 nanometer fab. Did you see that? Uh, wait, did you didn't? see that New York Times article about the person who has two more guesses on 200 oh million dollars in Bitcoin? Oh my god, I can't even think about it, dude. I can't even think about it. Um, this is it's, like common, like the, the, like the people had like bought Bitcoin ten years ago. Yeah, but the didn't amount think of about money, it, but the they bought money like is so high. I have the I have the quote right here. Yes, I just please hit, it, hit us. Uh, St uh, Stefan Thomas, a German-born programmer living in San Francisco, has two guesses left to figure out a password that is worth, as of this week, about $220 million. <laughs> the password will let him unlock a small hard drive known as Iron Key, which contains the private keys to a digital wallet that holds 7,002 Bitcoin. While the price <laughs> on Bitcoin dropped sharply on Monday, it's still more than 50% up from just a month ago when it passed its previous all-time high at around $20,000. The problem is that Mr. Thomas years ago lost the paper where he wrote down the password for, iron, for his Iron key which gives users 10 guesses before it seizes up and encrypts its contents forever he has since tried eight of his most commonly used password formulations to no avail uh, i would just lay in bed and think about it mr thomas said then i would go to the computer with some new strategy and it wouldn't work and i would be desperate again you know what's you the fucking worst you know what's the fucking worst about that thing is that if you type away you won't even know right yeah, that's you one of your know. fucking chances that's gone. I, that's you that's don't even what know. I thought about. Because how often you're like, oh, oh. shit, caps lock. Yeah, and it's like one. <laughs> Fuck. I think if I'm this dude and Rob will get right back, I'm sorry. I would sell this thing for fifty million dollars to to a bank or <laughs> even a, a million collective. dollars, right? Like, no, I want like more. that's it's worth two hundred twenty. I need fifty. Yeah, I want. I, I will give a you a list of every password I've ever used that I can remember. Yeah, Yeah. yeah. Whole, totally, totally, <laughs> yes. Gotta have to change. Uh, but yeah, I bet, somebody, <laughs> somebody has access to like hundreds of millions of dollars. Where they're like, I will take that bet. I'll take, I'll take that, that bet. Right, like fifty million maybe, to maybe ten like, million. I'd be good. Now I'm like talking myself down from that fifty. <laughs> fifty is a lot. Let's just put this is point out Austin Walker saying wouldn't settle for a mill. Like that's that's where he's at right now. Yeah. It's worth two twenty. Austin, I'm, Austin I'm not Lee's, taking that money. Lee's vice, and he's like, well, you know, I don't know if I'll settle for <laughs> that money. Isn't coming from regular people. It's coming from the ultra rich. I'm gonna take them for all their fucking worth. Yeah, yeah. 
I am <laughs> kind of curious as well how this all happened because my like I have you always hear these stories about like uber core power users locking themselves out of their shit or worse mm. like accidentally like locking loved ones out of important stuff which is always tragic when you hear about it right where it's like oh you know my my partner set up everything in our lives and now I can't access any of it because it's so like you know right. tr- so secured that nobody can get into it but this one person. That's why I have like a one password family account. I was like, I know, Katie, you don't fully understand how this app works, but I need you to have access to all of my stuff in case yeah. something was to happen. Yeah, no, we've got the one password, like everything critical is like everything's accessible for that reason. Uh, yeah. Password managers, they're great. Probably should have used one if you were doing that Bitcoin <laughs> thing. Yeah. Um, Did they, and, was and, that but, even a thing back then? Yeah, they've been, we don't know they've been around invested. for a while. Yeah. That's, that's fair. Yeah. Like, but maybe not when he bought that, right? You know, because like I, I remember listening to a, po- I was listening to like a sports podcast uh, d- around the NFL that I've listened to for years, and like one of their producers was someone who I might be bungling the story a little bit, but I believe they like bought Bitcoin, like I don't know, to buy drugs, and then it just sat there like unused for years, and then when they came back, and they, like they read an article that was like, oh, Bitcoin's worth a lot now, and just like whatever tiny amount they had bought turned into like. Fifty thousand dollars, like you know, oh just God. because it had just sat there for eight years. Um, right. On the other hand, I do kind of like hearing stories about people losing <laughs> fortunes in Bitcoin because, like, it's one of the worst things, right? Like, it's just oh yeah, it Bitcoin is, fans are, is are terrible. Yeah, so those are your Elon Musk and Bitcoin Venn diagram, like heavy <laughs> overlap. Yeah, like, and uh, like, and that's a broad generalization. I'm sure there's plenty of nice people who use Bitcoin and everything. <laughs> I Go almost bought Bitcoin but once. I'm mad I didn't. Yeah, I remember see, being, I remember it being at like a hundred eight, dude. I remember it was less than that. I remember in 2008, I was making freelance money for basically writing for content uh-huh. farms <laughs> and being like, I had to write this article about Bitcoin today. That sounds all right. Maybe that'll one day be worth a lot of money. I should just buy like let me just buy like ten Bitcoin. And I didn't do it, and I wish I had. Even because, even five years ago, when they were right. like Bitcoin's worth a lot now, if you just spent a thousand dollars, right, you'd be sitting pretty, sitting pretty <laughs> right now. But maybe the but you know maybe the purchase of such a Bitcoin would have turned me into a Bitcoin person. Do you know what right. I mean? Oh, you, what I would have right? what I would have paid to see the corru- the Bitcoin corruption of Austin Walker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, Rob. I'm your just computer. imagining, like, if Bitcoin became your new Gundam, it would be bad. It would be, <laughs> be bad. It would be bad. It'd be bad. I'd be. Well, the thing is, the thing is, I was just talking about this with somebody else. I think that I did a. I th- hope I did a good job of learning in my tw- my late twenties, early thirties to shut the fuck up about things I like and care about, except for in circumstances where it's entertaining or meaningful, because I'm talking to other people who care about it. Like, I'm not like skydiving into conversations to be like, have you, have you heard about Gundam lately? Uh, I know we just launched a Star Wars podcast, but like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm not forcing my interest on other people. A podcast is opt-in. That is the only you know? thing. Yeah, right, exactly. That's the only thing that makes any sort of niche interest annoying is the sort of like insistence that this is the most important thing in the world from someone else. And that if you don't understand it, then you're missing out or something. Um, and that is the, if I just like passively, like was like into Bitcoin on the side and like, I got, gave y'all updates when something funny happened in that world. uh, I think I'd be okay. But Austin, see, the thing is what you said there is like, you learned the lesson right around the time you would have been getting into Bitcoin and the magic of Bitcoin is it would have disabled the ability to learn that lesson (laughs) because you would have been like, I'm just watching the number go up and down. Oh man, this is, this is some heady stuff. And then you just be Austin Walker, Bitcoin guy. Ugh, oh, you're right. in a Dogecoin? Get out of here. Get the fuck. I mean, on that, I say that anyway. Get the fuck out of here, Dogecoin. Meme coins have no place in the marketplace. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. So. Um, anyway, so like it's not just CPUs, like everything is marked up because tons of people, I suspect, are also in major quarantine and they're like i need my entertainment box to be yeah. really good uh, the Demo- it's, it's democrats won the senate two thousand dollars is coming my way time to buy a computer <laughs> right <laughs> um that's we'll a, that the covid pittance too uh is is almost <laughs> here and uh there's never been a better time to build a gaming pc before your landlord tries to garnish your checking account <laughs> um Aww. so 
Anyway, so things are marked up as hell, and they will take forever to arrive. And in the meantime, like I was kind of, I just have my laptops really, and and that's that's it. Naturally, the minute the minute my PC stopped working, I was like, I want to play all the strategy games. <laughs> like hadn't hadn't really been messing with them too much uh, of late, but the minute they became unavailable, I was like, mm. damn, I want to play some Total War. Oh, you know what sounds good is, uh, you know, XCOM, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I remembered that, well, I have GeForce now. And it was really good last spring. Um, And I was, I would have used it a lot, except that I stopped traveling. So it became less important to use it. Why would I do that? Uh, So I fired it back up and realized that, like, I had sort of dimly been aware the, the minute GeForce Now kind of came out of beta and entered the public uh, conversation, instantly you had publishers and developers being like, well, I didn't say you could you could launch my games through GeForce Now. I didn't opt into this. Because what it used to let you do was you just run an instance of Steam on a GeForce, like uh, on an NVIDIA cloud machine, and then you just play your Steam library through that. And it works really, really well. Like I talked about this last year. It was awesome. Uh, and it occurred to me, like, th- this was its moment. Like, if if that if that functionality were still here, I probably could have ridden out some of these bad prices and just been like, I'm going to put off getting a new PC, and I'll just continue to record podcasts off this laptop. It's not ideal, but I can, you know, I can use GeForce now as, like, a pretty nice bridge to when it makes sense to actually buy a PC, and I've saved money to do that. Um, does it break embar- does it break embargo if you redeem a code on your Steam account and then play it through a GeForce Now instance? Ooh. Uh, I mean, I doubt it <laughs> uh, because usually those embargoes are like keep your profile private. Yeah, right. GeForce yeah, doesn't yeah. fuck with that; doesn't care if your profile is yeah, private. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 this is an interesting thing I hadn't really thought about. Like, a, if you had kept that situation, you can't yeah, do so, that, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and so like the GeForce Now library is not bad, but it's like one of those weird things where there's a world of difference between here's a bunch of popular games that people play these days versus your Steam library with your stuff. Um, and so it was it was kind of weird because there's lots of stuff on GeForce Now where. I'm kind of looking at it like, I don't know that I really want to play that through a streaming PC setup. Um, I just kind of want to play. Honestly, it's the silliest thing. You know what I got really hung up on was Unity of Command 2. The new graphics on Unity of Command 2, which is a Ugh. hex war game. Yeah. Uh, the new <laughs> graphics are just advanced enough that my, my laptops don't really love running mm. that game. Uh-huh. Um, and so I was like, I'm sorry, I need to unlock the power of the cloud so I can move <laughs> these little these little icons oh around God. this hex map. Um, uh, I need to give me, put me on the mainframe, NVIDIA. <laughs> I need <laughs> I need to liberate Italy. Um so I got kind of hung up on that, and I did find some cool stuff to play, but I was like, I don't like these limitations. Let me see what else is out there. And it turns out that GeForce Now has this quality bar where, like, you run it, and it's like you're just running a PC natively, like, locally. Um, and it's just kind of the interface. It, the the artifice of the stream kind of drops away, and it just feels like you're on your PC. And it's really, really cool. And I was like, well, surely, that like, it, streaming is streaming. There's probably no magic sauce, really, that NVIDIA is using. And that may be true, but it turns out... Uh, Getting to that quality bar right now so far is not easy. Um, I tried out a service called Shadow, uh, which has already rolled out in Europe. It's it's rolling out now in the U.S. And its whole deal is that you know it's it's a cloud PC business. You you access a virtual machine and you can do whatever you want with it. And they are marketing to gamers, but when I tried it, it was terrible (laughs) um i you know it's one of those things hard to work out like i had passed all my bandwidth checks uh it was like you should have a great experience the minute i actually connect to a machine i'm I'm, i start getting latency warnings and the connection is not real good so somewhere in there it's not working real well the pc i logged into um did not seem like the most modern machine in the world like it had a windows explorer icon there and it was like, hey, do you, you ever heard of Edge? 
you want to try Edge? And I was like, that seems like an update that should have been pushed a while ago. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know why this desktop is rendering at 800 by 600. Uh, oh that my doesn't God. seem good. Maybe um, you just get connected to like a real bad PC. Maybe you just yeah. get connected to your own PC. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I, ch- I I was like, what the fuck hardware am I running? No, it was like a bunch of like uh, server shard stuff. Uh, right. Like it was okay. clearly that. Um, so, you know, I... It's one of those things where they, they were very upfront. They are still rolling out. They're still building data centers uh, as, as fast as they can. Um, but I am not sure there are enough resources to do this for them right now. Uh, mm-hmm. And certainly, like, when I tried to install stuff, I was starting to run into permissions problems where it's like, you can't install stuff on this hard drive. And I was like, what are we doing here? What are we doing here? Uh, I will say, I, I used it like a year and a half ago and had, like, zero problems with it so not, not to, you know but I, I but it but it was like jarring when i logged in it was like yeah here's like a fresh windows install and i'm like what are you talking about like yeah. oh i guess i really am just renting like someone oh, just machine. jacked me into a, a pc um and i've heard good things about it so I, I, it seems like that maybe the typical shadow experience is somewhere between like <laughs> like your yeah. awful experience and um and it, it also the hadn't you said like like they have like localized servers but they're not in your region yet or something like so, that. I remember you. Yeah, mentioned I, I like chatted that with them uh, the other the other day and they did mention that they do have four data centers like what you'd expect, Texas, California, uh, Chicago and New York. Um, but it's interesting enough when you go to sign up for Shadow, you are warned that like, hey, here's when the service will be available in your area. And apparently That is not that the service does not exist in your area. It is that when you go to sign up, you're basically putting yourself in queue for when they think they have the capacity to serve you. Mm. Um, And so, like, that's they were like, people think we we keep changing the dates. We're not changing the dates. It's when you sign up, you sort of go in line. And we're just using this to sort of gate the inflow of users to match our capacity. Because I was able to get like upgraded to the press access thing, like this is not supposed to be Massachusetts for like two months, so it is possible that like they're just slammed in the Northeast, um, and that could be some of the that could be some of the stuff behind my bad morning. I'll give it another shot because uh, I am curious uh, if I can sort of work my way through some of these issues because um, it w- it's a cool idea and yeah. uh, you know chatting with them obviously they're evangelists about this stuff but you know they they I, I do kind of get where cloud pc people are coming from to an extent which is that there are valid concerns about energy usage and like uh the impact of things like this but their their central argument is an individual pc is an enormously inefficient thing where it is still drawing a lot of power when it's not really in use it is exerting a lot of power to cool itself off um, when that is much easier in a data center configuration. So, so I do get it. And you you talk to these folks and their, their belief is eventually uh, you know, increasingly you'll just be able to have your PC live in the cloud. And I do get that Um, right now. It still feels like that is a ways off um, for for a lot of until, Until my internet is stable, that will never be the case for me. I live yeah. in a big city, and every night for the last, like, two weeks now, after midnight, my my internet just goes to complete shit, and I don't have an option. There's no one else I can go to as a high-speed internet uh, provider in my in my building. And that yeah. is like, well, well, I guess I can't ever go to a cloud gaming thing because I'll, I'll just be fucked. Like- I, I have really, uh, really, even though I'm stuck with Comcast, like it's exceptionally fast. Like the money part of it is not great, but it's exceptionally fast. Mm-hmm. And I was playing 13 Sentinels uh, a night or two ago on my couch and also had my uh, switch on uh, the table next to me and had queued up a bunch of games to download. And just kind of, I like put in those dumped in those codes, like had mm-hmm. those games set to download over the next hour and went back to playing 13 Sentinels, just completely forgot the switch was there. And then all of a sudden, like <sighs> 13 Sentinels completely unplayable It's just like, <laughs> yo, your connection is shit, man. Like you can't do anything. I'm like changing the resolution. Like I like right. went through the uh, I actually like, 
took a, a network adapter and like finally hardwired my PS5, which is something I should have done before. Like I did all this yes. extra work and I was like, reboot the router, do all that stuff. It's like, all right, I did some really good, important cleaning up of of my my network, like sort of like utility in the house. Sat down with it again and was still like, yeah, like this is just not going to work. And I was like, oh, that switch is downloading right next to me at like, you know, 60 gigs of shit. Right. I paused those downloads and I was like, ah, Instantly. you know, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Uh, which is, it like, goes to show you can have like, a really good connection, hardwired, like do all the quote unquote stuff. Right. And right. then it only takes like one device futzing with your bandwidth. And, you know, um, you, you intrude, and I'm in a house where everyone was asleep and, right. you know, put that in an apartment or, you know, with roommates or bigger families. And it's just easy to see how all this stuff feels like it's, it's, it's right there from a foundational, like, like yeah. tech is there. Yeah. So many failure like, points. But yeah, functionally it feels like it's, it's five years off um, right yeah. from from being like practically well, useful for a lot of people and because even so one thing that was kind of cool about uh when i did when i was using geforce now the other morning was it was one of those like really great moments where you're like how it was it was kind of an unintentional stress test because my partner was uh connected to a video conference uh that she was uh taking part in I think usually on any given day, there's some virtual machine stuff doing at uh, her office. I was also uploading the entire contents of my like long-term media storage to Google um, because, okay. Oh, uh-huh. this, oh even, when, even Rob glasses. has to rub his face because yeah. he's about to admit something to us. <clears> I just, I'm ready. I, I got, my, my fingers are tingling. Like I cannot <laughs> wait. I don't even know what well, this is. You saw this whole conversation play out in the Discord we're in uh, with some of the giant bomb folks, right? Where, like, uh, I bring a simple problem. Uh-huh. I don't think Patrick is in the tech channel in that chat. No, that one's muted. I, I don't yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't <laughs> that one. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, yeah, so I'm in that channel a lot um because it is extremely on everyone's bullshit uh channel but so yeah the thing is there like i have never really found a archival media storage solution that i've really been happy with um like i've got an external hard drive that i never remember to plug in regularly do backups and imaging <laughs> yes never uh-huh. do that like i always intend to i do it once and then i'm like well i don't know and then because you don't do it regularly you plug it in the next time. There's tons of conflicts. It's like, hey, what's this file doesn't match? This like, what's what's going on here? And I'm like, oh, I don't know if I don't know which copy is more valid, right? Like <laughs> things have changed. Which is which is the reference here that I should that I should care about? And I end up like being like, yeah, you know, just let's be safe. Let's save it all. And that's how mm. I end up with like two copies of my media library, like living <laughs> side by side. And then suddenly everything's just terrible. Um, so there's that. Uh, and so I've like, this is how my my brain works. I'm like, oh man, I can't trust my PC. Like my PC is in rough shape. Uh, I've got a lot of things on that hard drive that if that hard drive were to suddenly go, I'd be in deep trouble. Uh, I should just back that up. What I really need is a network oh attached storage. Oh my okay. god, what is that? That's mean? what I should. Do. I don't. I've heard that phrase, but I don't know what that means. Okay, so basically. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a few ways you can go about it, but a network attached attach storage is like a tiny little long-term data storage server that lives in your house on your network. So you're just, you're just building a mini mini PC that is just explicitly just meant to be a storage unit. Okay. All right. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Um, the thing is, generally these things, I guess, are uh, running Linux. And also, if you're going to get much out of it, like if it's going to truly be secure, you probably want to do some file integrity stuff uh, so that you are making sure that your files rem- don't get corrupted just over time sure. uh, as wear and tear uh, occurs on a hard drive or you know you have to worry about bit decay. Um, and so that means that effectively, like you have to have this really, everything has to be saved twice and checked against itself um, in order to make sure that like your your files are truly backed up. And doing this all yourself, um, and a lot of the folks that are are in that channel love mm-hmm. to do everything by themselves. Like, whereas uh, I feel I like not- every po- every podcast is like, hey. 
Here's this cloud app. You just you just uh, yeah. sign up and just, just hit upload. Backblaze has got, has got you. I feel like I heard we'll, Backblaze. Oh, we'll talk about back, Backblaze in a second. <laughs> oh, my um, fucking God. Let's go. Can we – a moment ago we were dragging what if Austin got into crypto, but right in uh-huh. front of us for real was what if Rob got into – Rob just said hey, bit decay. These are yeah. real problems affecting <laughs> real people. You've been talking to Brad Shoemaker way too much is way what, too much. what <laughs> I've learned from this conversation. So yes, maybe. Uh, I think here's the problem. Here, here's here's one of many problems. Brad loves to mess with all this shit. I just uh-huh. want the end result. I'm just okay, like, no, I sure, just want yeah. the shit to be awesome. Tell me what and, to go buy and what to go do. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but the thing is, like, so I was like, oh, I don't, know, I can't get into this, and I realized the alternative to building my own machine would be to buy sort of a ready-made one, which are hundreds of dollars before you add in the hard drives, and that was vetoed. Um, and then someone at motherboard, I'm not going to name names, <laughs> was like, hey, why don't you just let big brother Google take care of you? Wow. And I was like, we can't say that. Like we work on motherboard, <laughs> like the tech monopolies are bad. Like these companies are all kind of evil. And, uh, this person was like, yeah, no, they are. I got it. I got it. I, I believe that. Yes. But also sometimes you just got to let all that go. <laughs> and just put that shit in the cloud and never think about it. I've got one hard drive. It does everything. And everything else is in the cloud and I don't care. <laughs> and I was like, man, that sounds like a really liberating life. Uh that that sounds that sounds like true freedom. Uh just live just lived in the enclosed gardens of uh a massive tech monopoly. Well, and if you're um, about to get hit with data caps and pay 30 bucks a month extra to be able to li- keep living that unlimited cap life anyway, you might you might as well just walk through the pearly data gates. Yeah. So, uh <laughs> I did. I I I was like, all right, give me the 2 terabytes of storage. Fuck it. Wow. We will. This will bridge us to uh whatever my permanent setup is. Backblaze does seem cool. Uh their their rates seem good, but uh long term I'm probably going to be storing off more than one PC and Backblaze doesn't seem to like that. Um, uh the other thing is their upload rate is pretty slow and I I was in a situation where I was like I need to get like a terabyte of stuff off this PC like ASAP. I th- yeah, they're meant to be like, "Hey, quietly over the next 30 days, we'll take care yeah. of your stuff." And I'm like, I need this done like tomorrow. <laughs> Um, and so like, so I was playing GeForce now while I was uploading sort of max, like maxing out my data upload, uh, there's a video conference going on. Um, there's some virtual machine, machine stuff happening. And then I'm playing GeForce now and it was, it was awesome. And it occurs to me that one, I'm glad I ended up being forced to buy a new router, uh, last year, but two, there's a lot you can do on your side to make these things better, but like you're still at the mercy of like, what is the ISP infrastructure between mm-hmm. you and whatever you're talking to. And that's, and that's the thing I don't, that seems like it's going to be a big problem, right? Because there are so many points of failure that you do not control and are being run by companies that fundamentally don't give a shit. Um, you know, Comcast, I, I, I think like they love to try to upsell people in my building when like you get, you get more data. Uh, apparently there's a very nice Kate, like connection that this, this building has. Um, but you never realize those speeds because like, as soon as you hit like, you know, the main trunk line or whatever, things kind of fall to shit. Right. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where you can buy for a lot of theoretical, uh, performance, but in terms of your ability to do things, like I just want to talk to a random PC in the cloud somewhere and have it be like immediate and responsive, that seems tough. So now is your plan to like how you're on your laptop currently. You still don't yeah. have the PC. Did, did, are you committing to buying the Intel and just going down the road of what's available? Or are you now going to play this kind of crapshoot game of trying to get piece by piece what you need to build a new machine? I found I found a good Ryzen. OK. Um, and so like the, the, this is this as you might expect, this problem is at its worst at the very high end. Um it you're still playing markups pretty much across the board, but like I found a reasonable markup and just ate that um, because I do want this sort of just sorted out. Um, I think if, you know, I think if these virtual PC options were more reliable, again, I could have made this last for a while. Right. 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 Um, but 
they're just not like <laughs> I think if I, I think if it were as good as having a PC or even close um, regularly to having a PC uh, that's yours that you can talk to, that's that's one thing. But, uh, you know, a few days of this and I was like, it's just it's just not ready. I can't use this as a stopgap to go weeks uh, yeah. until like prices drop, which right. who, kn- who even knows what the prices are going to do because it's uh, it's, it's absurd right now, probably in part because Bitcoin is hot is, is still worth a lot of money. Uh, I did also try a, a thing called paper space, which is like virtual machines for professionals. And MK's suspicion is this is what the Bitcoin mining is why I got this question. But when I clicked on, Hey, give me the, give me the good PC. Cause you can just <laughs> buy a PC to do your coding on sure. whatever and like test, sure. test programming. But then they have like behind a little gate, there's like, you want ones with dedicated graphics card. You want mm. these like network GPUs. And I was like, do I? Yeah. <laughs> and I click on it and immediately you get a, uh, your account's not authorized for this. Uh, wow. what do you want? What do you want this GPU for? What are you going to be doing? And I was like, uh, I'm going to be playing sweet games, sir. <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see how that goes over. Uh, MK suspicion is they will wave it through because that's not Bitcoin money. And that's probably right. the thing that they're mm. worried about is people are going to be like, I'm just going to use, the, use these machines to mine Bitcoin because oh, yeah. it's worth more than the hourly rate that this oh, yeah. uh, service charges. Definitely. Come but on. yeah, so um, I'm – Currently in a very transitional state with regards to my PC life, uh, my data storage. I've got everything up in up in drive. That's going to be great, but I do think long term uh, a NAS is right for me. Are you gonna like? What are you? We don't need to go further down this road. Good luck with. <laughs> but I was gonna ask you like for specific models and like, are you gonna have it a big unit in the house oh, somewhere? Like, what's I'm gonna have a big be, like, unit. You do not need to worry about that. Big old Great. Synology, just like parked somewhere unobtrusive, like the center of my room. Um, you know, maybe what is the, are these like bigger than a? Are they bigger than a PS Five? Like, what's the size? Oh, dude, uh, bigger than a bread box. Um, yeah, a okay. bread box, but it's not, like a little right. mini server. Right. Yeah, I mean, it's not wild. Like, there, there's some smaller Synologies. Like, obviously, I won't do that. Uh, I will. I'll require a larger one uh, wow. because there's, you know, there's two things. One is that uh, I want one with like four drives, so I got that little extra layer of redundancy, and I can just sort of hot swap and not even worry about a drive failing. Um, and two, long term, like I want to start securing my media library with all the precious treasures, and uh, <laughs> that's going to be pretty. That's going to be pretty. Uh, For the future. Storage hungry. Yeah. You know, you don't know what 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 your what legacy are you leaving behind for your kin? Right. And, you know, I'll make sure everyone has the passwords to get into that stuff. And, you know, uh-huh. I am going in. I think when the time comes, I will also share my bounty with the world and be like, come join my Plex server. As right. soon as I learn how to use Plex, <laughs> I will share my bounty with the people. Plex is easy. Well, I'm, oh, that's I'm great. I'm, a, I'm, I'm on. I'm, I've two, now I'm I'm on board. two friends Plex servers. It's it's a. It's a godsend. <laughs> it's it's great. Yeah, Patrick. I hope you like choral music. Do, uh, you know what? You know, so I got to ins- you know, widen I'll my uh, my things. daughter's. She's four and a half. She needs to you know see things more than Finding Nemo. And I'm gonna say, uh, you know, she's not at school right now. I'm like, look, this is your right. hour of educational time. Uh, Rob has uh, curated uh, a list on this Plex <laughs> server for you. Um, just hey Jessica, today we're gonna <laughs> learn about Sheila Antico. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you about their approach to Renaissance choral music and God, how that's eight. distinct from just, uh, uh, the 16s. Rob, I need I need to curate the uh, Criterion collection. You know, just forget you just pick a couple of crime thrillers uh, for <laughs> for my daughter to work through. How well, is she with I, subtitles? <laughs> <laughs> I love the idea of a Rob Zachney like educational music series where Rob is <laughs> narrating, uh, you know, uh, uh, before and then over music and explaining elements to it to a, to a young audience. Uh, that's fantastic! Can't wait. She's got to corrupt go her before business. she goes to kindergarten and then just. Yeah. <laughs> Have her lecturing the rest of those kindergartners on what really <laughs> yes. matters in this world, Rob. Now, when you see Benjamin Britten's name, you can just skip that shit. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> do not at me about Benjamin. I do not want to hear it. Like, I've tried. I get it. I get it. Very important composer. Also, not a fan. Uh, all right. We should take a break and come back and talk about video games, probably. BRB.
All right, we are back. You know what I like about the new year is Mm -hmm. it's a good time to finish things. Oh. You know, you have like a couple things from the previous year, maybe, uh, or you're even before that, you're like, grudges, (laughs) end them. New year. Passwords, you're trying to figure it out. Either end the grudge or end the reason for the grudge. You know what I mean? Shit, like uh, Exactly. <laughs> um, and so and so, I, I set up upon myself this week to to try to wrap some things up. Sometimes that's uh, in, in anticipation of something to come. That was the case with Hitman 2. I finally went back. Uh, I beat the final shit. two DLC levels of Hitman 2. You know I'm like notoriously bad at going back and playing DLC. And so I never played this like really cool hit inside of a New York super bank uh, that they released, nor a cool um, level on like an island where people get their bodies. Ch- like it's like a it's like an island that has that machine from Elysium where people can just change what their physical appearances look like. Um, the movie, the Matt Damon uh, uh, movie, Elysium. That's from the District favorite. Nine guy, right? It is from the District Nine guy. I like Elysium District Nine. Is great. Did he also make Chappie? He also made Chappie. Chappie's great. So I he's like got Chappie. two real I'm, winners. How's Elysium? I, I, it's all right. It's I like it, but it's not. It's not good. Like you know, but it maybe got right. dragged harder than it should have been. Uh, I'd say in retrospect, yes. In retrospect to what action movies went on to look like, <clears throat> I would have rathered more Elysiums than more of what we got in the 2010s. You know what I mean? Um, so, so Hitman was good. Uh, and I'll, again, disclosure: Janine Hawkins, who's from Friends of the Table, works on that game. Um, but I really like going back to that. And and wrapping that up and, and also kind of getting myself ready to go back into Hitman 3 because, like, I don't remember. Every time I try to play a Hitman game, I, I'm like, oh, shit, I don't remember how any of this works. And the <laughs> moment that you that you realize that is the worst moment possible. It's when you're like, I have to turn this corner and throw this ashtray into that man's head. And instead, you throw that corner. You realize you're now trespassing. And instead of throwing the ashtray, you drop it on the ground. And the guy turns around and goes, hey, you dropped that. Hey, you're not supposed to be in here. And then draws a gun and aims it at you. And you're like, well... This hit's going great. Um, you're supposed to be like channeling Agent 47, but instead you're just you. It's yeah, just exactly. Like 100%. If I were in the situation, like, oh, no. I'm like me channeling Charlie Chaplin. You know what I mean? I'm yeah. just like leaning all the way into bumbling idiot. Um, so that was one of the things I wrapped up. And, and those levels are really cool. Uh, the the bank level, um, I feel like I was unfair. I We don't have to go over the specifics, but I think that the CEO's key that's supposed to get you to everything in the entire bank should have worked on the door to the vault. And when I learned it didn't, things went really Haven't bad. Have you seen Die Hard? Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. This is, yeah. Uh-huh. Fair. You can't. Um, like, there's, there's one. It's, you know, you can't. One person can't just open that vault. I know you're not wrong, but the key to that vault was like one room away in a closet. So it's not like they were doing real good, oh, like info great. sec to begin with. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, um, the vault key was like above the mop and bucket. Where it was in, yeah, it was in the security office looking at the vault. Like, what? That's not where you should keep that either. It shouldn't be within sight of the place to swipe that key. It needs to be further away than that. Anyway, that level was fun, and the island was really fun. Um, and then and then yesterday I got the bug again. I was like, you know, there's some stuff. I have some more unfinished business. You know, I guess it would have been I, how, how long would have this been? Let me let me look up something really quick. What was when was this released? In December twentieth, twenty eleven. A little game called Star Wars: The Old Republic came out. The <laughs> Bioware MMO uh, oh, no. f- from from uh, mm-hmm. uh, the Bioware Austin studio that advanced the old Knights of the Old Republic. Uh, storyline by like 300 years um you know revan and the exile and all everyone's favorite character mandalore and candorous ordo everyone's favorite characters mm-hmm. their legacies basila shan you know all of the, all that stuff uh, uh i was like I, I guess i should give some backstory which is um actually along with janine hawkins and also art uh, from friends of the table in 2011 2012 we went hard into old republic we played everything there was at launch except for the final planet of that game, the final area, and the finale, the, the big conclusion. We literally, at the time, got to Corellia, where the final stuff is, went like, oh, we should go look at what this planet looks like before we wrap up tonight, ran to like where the main like quest hub was at the very beginning of that world, and then stopped playing the game forever. Never went back four hours from the conclusion of, that, of each of our class stories. Was story it just because you were savoring it? Were you like, we don't want this journey to end? I need to remember the specifics. On one end, I think we were probably getting done with it. Um, I think for me, the most fun I had with that game was during the kind of group activities where you could kind of like 
each make different decisions uh, or try to push the party in different directions and almost felt like a tabletop role playing game. And that was really fun. Or the class stuff, like the thing that made Old Republic really cool and different than something like WoW, which it plays a lot like in some ways. Uh, or in many ways, is that when you did your class story, it was like playing a Bioware game. You have companions who approve or disapprove of what you do. You are making choices about like, hey, do you want to go, you know, stop the Sith secret police or do you want to go save the hostages? What, which, which choice are you making? And, and what does that mean about the Jedi that you are if, if you're playing as a Jedi Knight, for instance? Um, and so – I like that stuff, but at the time, I think we were just kind of tired of it. Also, maybe my computer did a Rob uh, and completely <laughs> fell apart, like Rob's computer just did. Well, hold on. But, yeah, let's not say it's like doing, doing a, a Rob. Rob. <laughs> right? Like a, a Rob's PC. <laughs> yeah, a Rob's PC. A Rob's PC. That, yeah, sorry. Sorry, sorry. Uh, <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, I think that that, that, that it was around that, that time also that maybe my PC fell apart or, you know, I was playing it on a laptop actually. So uh, maybe my laptop just wasn't there anymore. Um, I'm trying to, I'm, I, I have a way of telling when this, when this happened, but it doesn't matter. Um, the, the, the key of it, it was, no, I think we just stopped playing. I think we just like hit that thing. Maybe we took like a break because I had to go home for, you know, a holiday or something. And then like the, the, it's one of those things, right? Where like the, the spell is broken. I got, anyway, to the, I got to the end of Sekiro final boss and said, I'm good. I'm good. Never right. did it. <laughs> totally. That happens. Right. And so this was literally, you know, for people who don't know the way that this game works is like you go to a planet, you have your main class story on the planet, and then you have whatever like side stuff you want to do on that planet. We hit level cap. So at the time we literally, all we had to do was the main class story for each of our classes then go do the big finale, and then we are done. And so now, eight years later, nine years later, last night, uh, some friends of mine are getting into, into Old Republic. I was like, I'll make a new character and fuck around for a little bit. Why not? And I did that, and then I hit a point where I was like, no, I can't fuck around in the Old Republic. I got work to do. I, I'm going to end this shit. I'm going after the Emperor. I'm going to kill that motherfucker. It's going to be over. And so I loaded into my Jedi Knight character. I remembered, I like looked up what the contemporary version of my rotation is, which is much simpler, I think, than it was in 1.0. <laughs> I remember at 1.0, I had to like keep 15 abilities like in my mind at one time. And now I'm just like one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Very simple, easy, what are you playing? like uh, Jedi Knight, uh, Jedi Knight, uh, the kind of dot DPS version mm. of it, single saber. Um, you know, very like traditional looking Jedi. Uh, except, except I was playing him extremely dark sided, which is extremely fun because the way that that game works is you have your faction, but you can also have your lighter dark side, right? And so the dark side Jedi is like, um, very much interested in like getting the job done no matter what, saving the Republic, not necessarily helping people. Um, I mean, I guess case in point to this is when you beat the game in beta, when this game was in beta, if you beat the game as a dark side Jedi for the Republic, Instead of getting the Jedi Master title added to your account, you got the general title added to your account. Mm. Uh, and that still happens fictionally. You like get your Revealing. big and yeah, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you get your big like final conversation with your your Jedi Master, Satil Shan, and she is like, You did a great job out there, but I can feel, I can sense the dark side. It's hanging over you in a serious way. I wish I could welcome you as a Jedi Master, but until what Fallout One bullshit is this? A hundred percent. Like, but until you make, until you you reconnect with the Force, we can't go forward on that. Um, and your character can just be like, <clears throat> I've done more for this Republic than the rest of the Jedi ever can, and I absolutely said that. And another <laughs> like, you know, a, a nearby admiral or whatever, high the the high commander of the Republic's army was like, this is BS. This Jedi clearly helped us win this war. You should be rewarded with something. I'm giving you the the honorary title of High General or whatever it was. Uh, but apparently in the beta, enough people cried about that or mad about that that they undid that change and you don't get the general title anymore. Everybody gets the Jedi Master title, even if you didn't fucking earn it. Even if literally your master was like, you don't get to be a Jedi Master. You're clearly consumed by the dark side. Look at your face. The veins are like coming. <laughs> and I can I could do the uh, uh, you, uh, Yeah, ex <laughs> exactly. I could do a map where I could feel how deep. Your skin has recessed. Uh, <laughs> you're evil. You're, you're Star Wars evil now, Austin. Um, but no, I still get the Jedi Master title now. Anyway, mm -hmm. I did it. I went through. I beat that final planet. Uh, I did all the, the class stuff and, and then confronted the Emperor. 
There was like some fun beats there. I wish I would have done it eight, nine years ago when I wasn't like completely bored by this kind of MMO uh, encounter design style. This game is not does not hold up in that way. Maybe the later content has gotten more interesting. But let me tell you, that launch content is a drag. It's a lot of like. Go to the go to this place and turn off the engine. Now do it two more times in two more places that are basically identical and like go from enemy pod to enemy pod doing the same thing. Where like as long as your rotation is down, you're going to have no problem getting through it. Um, I guess to 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 my, you know, I guess to, to their credit or 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 maybe uh, just to, to walk that back a little bit. I was a little over leveled because most of that content was like levels 47 to 50 and I was 50 at the start and 52 by the end of it. So like, eh, you know, maybe there's I can cut them some slack a little bit, but not really like the basic design is just not there, but it was really nice to go back and put a wrapper on that and like close that book. Like that was an open book forever. It was like, what's that fight? Like, I have no mm. idea what that final fight is going to be like. I know I'm supposed to like go fight the emperor or whatever and getting to close that door and like re-inhabit that character for like, four hours yesterday was really fun. So, you know, is that game basically on ice? Like it's, uh, <sighs> you know, I think the like, last, does the saga continue? I think the last big expansion um, was 20. I guess there was a 2019 one, apparently. But it was the yeah, last I, feel, I feel I have definitely gotten emails about, yeah. that, about that game. It's still it's still all right. It's, you know, EverQuest just got a new expansion. Yeah. <laughs> like um, MMOs just get expansions still. Anthem's going to be good any day now. Oh, any day on. now. Oh, come on. Um, come on. I mean, this is the thing is that like I actually felt. I'm curious. I actually was playing Old Republic and I was like. This got more right than Anthem did in some ways because I care about these characters and like get to make some interesting choices. Yeah, but right. then but then earlier you said ah, looked up how I press one two three four five. Oh no, yeah, like, no, into totally that rhythm and like that. Yes. Great, <laughs> that's why Absolutely. I don't play the most. No, like that's that's the the, the combat. Uh, for, and again, I was playing a very boring, very straightforward yeah, sure, class sure, and sure. was over leveled. So, um, but yeah, I guess there was a there was an expansion in 2019 though. I don't really know. How that works, because the last the stuff that I last read about in the Old Republic, um, which was Knights of the Fallen Empire and Knights of Eternal Throne, like took place in the future of the Old Republic. Like You get frozen in carbonite. And when you wake up, there's a new empire that exists and has like taken over the galaxy. I'm sorry, um, like pre Battle of Yavin or yeah, like still so well far pre, in the future. Yes. That, okay. No, no, no. Still very pre pre. So it's like, Battle whoops, Yavin. there's another empire. Um, it's, I don't, I don't, I guess I can, sp uh, it's very clear at the end of the night, the, the Jedi Knight ending, and I think also the Sith Warrior story, the launch story from again, nine years ago, that the emperor of the Sith Empire is not simply a human, but is someone who can kind of take over multiple bodies and forms. So my suspicion is that this is like, and then he fucked off and built another emperor. You, you knocked him out in such a way that he couldn't like connect to the Sith anymore or whatever. And the Sith fell into disarray, but then he went off and founded the different empire or something. That's my guess. I've not played this stuff, but if I had to, based on the stuff I've played and seen, that is my read. Um, but yeah, I think that it's, again, like the, the premise of that shit is that you early on in that story, you get knocked out, frozen in carbonite. And then, and then you wake up. I, I, I thought it was like hundreds of years later, um, but maybe that's maybe that's not exactly right. Um, uh, I hate how much that premise does for me. I'm really always good. like, oh wait, you just wake up and it's like a new scenario, and like I'm like, hell yes, give me that. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm with you. Um, you wake up, there's a lightsaber on the table, and it's just like we've been waiting. Okay, cool. we've been waiting yeah. for you. Yeah, this, this, let, me, let me let me Gordon Freeman this. I mean, the <laughs> premise of the the new shit that I it's like this is the thing. It's like I'm gonna fucking work myself into a shoot and end up playing this, or at least watching a video about what happens in it. Um, the Eternal Empire of Zakul, which is the the focus of this the two of these expansions, is a totalitarian dictatorship under the Immortal Emperor. Citizens don't merely obey the Emperor; they view him as their timeless guide guide and protector by trusting him with all political and military power they can focus on higher learning and the finer aspects of civilized society all citizens receive a monthly stipend of credits and resources such as food and fuel compared to the rest of the galaxy the average zakulin would be a member of the upper class and want for nothing they are idealistic people scientists artists and philosophers who look down on the sith empire and the republic disgusted by their warmongering ways instead of the valkorian's arrogance they believe it is their burden to bring enlightenment to the rest of the galaxy mm -hmm. i kind of want to play that game i want to I want to see that empire. <laughs> sounds all right. I want to live there. That sounds okay. I hear that they're a totalitarian dictatorship, 
but that bit about everyone getting money and resources and not having to pay rent sounds okay. What happened there? How'd that, how's that work out? Yeah. I don't know. Probably bad, but, but I'm curious <laughs> about it. Um, yeah, but we'll be, we'll be convincing. We'll be satisfyingly bad where it's like, right. no, it's bad that all your needs are met and you can define yourself however you like and lead the life you've dreamed of. Because yeah, like I'm curious how they arrive at that, right? Like, yeah. is it the entire thing is built on bones? Okay, right, cool. Right, then like right, then we can talk. Right. But if it's just, oh no, like uh, he doesn't let you have parliamentary democracy, <laughs> right? So yes. are you really free? <laughs> right. That is that is really the question. Have a say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um. So anyway, that's my my old republic weird diversion. That's what I got up to this week. Um, or I game, guess yesterday specifically. How different was that game's mechanics from the the Coder series? Much, much, okay. much, 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 much. It's it's a while. Hey, what if like, we all got into Guild Wars? I'm not going to do it again. I've done it. I've been deep into Guild Wars. I've, the I've, first one? No, I guess the second one. Not the, not the, the first one. I've heard is like I'm not getting into the Guild Wars. Guild Wars is from actually, what 2003. Between actually keeping up yeah. with Destiny and trying to inch my way towards catching up with Final Fantasy XIV, I don't have time in my life for another MMO. God. Um, no, me either. But yeah, the the Knights of the Old Republic games are just like D20. It's like playing D&D. Like you have stat scores that are about like your ability to open doors and <laughs> convince people of things. You know what I mean? <laughs> the Whereas... Old Republic is just is just a wow, well, basically. Right, gotcha. Um, yeah, so so it goes, so it goes. Anyone else dip into anything? Patrick, are you still on that Thirteen Sentinels? Yeah, it's weird. I I'm gonna have to play other games because like there's there's not like a Thirteen Sentinels update like because right. it would just be like you giving hey, the premise again. When, yeah, like now it's like just you know it's a lot of I start a new sequence and then. You know, I guess what I will say is I would be so curious about the writing process for this game because the presentation of 13 Sentinels is 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 sequences out of sequence. Like it is clear right. that like the story, it feels like the story was written in a linear fashion and then is presented to the player nonlinearly. Now, again, I don't know how, you know, what the explanations will be for like how certain things, maybe, you know, but like it's it's fun. Like the storytelling itself is a puzzle piece because you're not seeing things necessarily in order. At least that's the, right. the how it's suggested to the player that you are watching things in a in, in a sequence that is not necessarily from uh, uh, normal start uh, to finish. Um, but yeah, I don't know. We're just like, I don't have to play other games because so maybe if you keep playing it we can do a spoiler cast or, or something like that at the end of it. Cause it's not like a game I can be like, so what happened? Well, right. I can't talk about anything that happened <laughs> because everything that I would say is like a potential spoiler for um, now that I'm like, you know, 11 hours in, I will say I finished. So when you get past the prologue, then you get to like this carousel of characters that we talked about where you can like do different routes um, for the, like, I don't know, like 15 or like 12 or whatever characters it's, it's a decent Ooh. number of characters that you can pick from and as you encounter new characters um in in other characters routes that will open up them as a character you can specifically follow um i did everything like in the trees and so then it was like all right i guess time to do the combat and i mean it is it <laughs> when they mean casual i they're not lying um mm. they uh which is fine it's exactly what i wanted it, it is just like <laughs> i jump into the combat the upgrades don't matter. The, the what you have uh, kitted out your characters with irrelevant. Um, where they are on the map does not matter. You just jump in. You smash that A button for about ninety seconds and S rank. Here's your mystery points so you can unlock uh, the lore. And and specifically, there are lore bits that are unlocked if you only meet the bonus objectives, like oh beat it in a minute or do so with certain characters. Um, and I just want that's I, that's what that's the shit I want. I don't want to like lose a fight and have to either do it again yeah. or not get that little piece of story or look that up on a wiki. Like so, I'm complete. You know, so I spent like an hour grinding through the like set of like. There's nothing I can do. I have to get through these combat sequences because of the way the game gates um, further like of the, the 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 visual novel part of it is like beat this wave in order to like unlock this keyword that lets you then go down this path. So that's, that's where I'm at. And we'll, we can visit it later. The one thing that would be relevant for this podcast is I, uh, uh, I did like a uh, lambasted a bunch of like remote play for like a lack of 
uh, like customization options. And I still wish it had more, but there are a little bit more than I was aware of at the time. I just, uh, if like, as you're launching remote play, uh, on, on the, so like there's not that many options on the PS5 itself, which is, I thought where most of your like customization would come from is like, Oh, you're on the machine. You're going to choose what it's going to spit out to the devices that, uh, make a connection with it. And it turns out on the app itself, you have a couple more options. So like I was able to bump it up um, to like 1080p. It was like defaults to 540p, which on a screen of an iPhone isn't that big of a difference. But once I hardwired my PS5 and set it to 1080p, and then also you can turn on HDR. Like it'll do that through remote play. And like this game has really beautiful lighting with it's like it's painterly 2D um, artwork to the point where, yeah, I think ACR is neat, but I can kind of like take it or leave it in a lot of instances. But then I'll play a game like Ghost of Tsushima where it's like, ah, shit, actually, ACR is incredible. <laughs> um, and that's like a fully, you know, 3D open world. And then like the other test, the other game that I would tell you, like, you want to like know why HDR is like pretty dope is like this 2D visual novel, <laughs> um, 13 Sentinels. Like the sequences where you're like outside at the school, like it is like... The, the best way I can convey HDR to folks that haven't really experienced it is like when you like go out into the sun and your eyes squint a little, like Ooh. HDR like is able to fake that sometimes. Yeah. Like yeah. I can feel my eye like having the physical reaction that I am seeing the sun and it's doing this in a 2D visual novel on my phone that's a, like, you know, a foot from my my face. It looks so like now that I've got the connection style, like 1080p HDR on, on an iPhone 12, like it looks so fucking good. It would look even better on a big screen, but it looks gorgeous on, on this little bit. So if you're using remote play or like, or I, I know some folks reached out and said they bought a backbone after I had recommended mm-hmm. it, like make sure you go into like the settings on the phone app. And if you have the connection or if you're like, you know, like a lot of people are maybe just remote playing from their PlayStation right. four or five right. that's sitting next to them in the room. They just want to do it on the couch. Just make sure you bump that up because it does make a meaningful difference. Um, and uh, the HDR stuff, if you're, if you're, I think most phones these days have HDR, but um, if it does, flip it on because it's, uh, it's really, uh, it's really pretty. Now it's got me thinking like, okay, I think I'm, a, I'm gonna try and finish Demon Souls this way. I'm like, <laughs> I'm gonna go fight King Alant. Uh, uh, th- this is the method God. I'm gonna do to. To finally like finish the last hour and a half of that would be I haven't very finished funny. that game because I don't want to fight the blue dragon. Like that part is just so boring. Like, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna go get out some arrows and I'm gonna shoot that blue dragon. It's like Ugh. you don't need to fight that dragon. Wait, which dragon? The dragon in front of the Yeah, Ele- like you don't have you yeah, yes, you, you can, can run, through, run that. through that final section. But like yeah. I remember when I played it originally, I just I just I beat the do you did you not do it? Did you just run Fuck through that. it? Just okay. run through that. What am I because it's the end of the game, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. The way I feel about that is like if that was early game and I was like, I can get something cool from killing this dragon, then maybe. But it's literally right. one of the last things I do. You do, right? right? So fuck that. Just run maybe through I'll, Maybe I'll commit to beating Demon Souls on this remote play app on my couch. And That'd be very <laughs> funny. I'll report, I'll report That'd be back. very funny. Yeah. That fight's hard. So I, you know, Godspeed. Just um, imagine if Bard had said, I don't want to fight that dragon. I don't want to shoot <laughs> that dragon. Oh fuck God. that. Okay. Great. <laughs> oh, the the only other thing I played was uh, well. Let me ask Kato: Will this go out at uh, ten a.m. Yeah. Eastern Standard Time? Yeah, on we Friday? can do that. Okay. That's, All that's right. not. Yeah, I have nothing meaningful to say about it except that I like no one redeemed the Persona Five Strikers code that I got. <laughs> so I was like, "All right, I'll I'll check this out on Switch and 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 check it out." So that you know, Persona Five Strikers is you know uh, Persona's take on the um, uh, fuck it. I'm forgetting the, the term. labor movement. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. No, the Age of Calamity. Muso, Muso, Warriors. Muso game. Muso. Yeah, 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 Warrior yeah. style game. Um, and I was like, I really love the style of Persona 5, you know, and like maybe that will just be something fun to goof around on the couch. And that may be the case, except that like it appears this is like, you know, a seat, like a, you know, a story that takes place after Persona 5. And like there's a lot of like going around the city and talking to people and like visiting with characters that you would have emotional attachments to if you'd played Persona 5. And I got to like a sequence. <laughs> like I played like the intro tutorial of the comment. I was like, oh, this seems kind of neat. It's very pretty. Yeah. And then it was like clear that it was like what's in front of me was like two hours of like catching up with characters. And I was like, well, I hope nobody else wants this code because it's stuck on my Switch now because I don't, I don't have, I, it was, I played 20 hours of Persona 5, like really liked it. And then just, it was like, I don't have another 60 in me to, to see it to the end. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's that, that game seems pretty. I just, I, I couldn't even say that without disclosing, figuring out the embargo. But so yeah, <laughs> that game seems pretty if you're into Persona. Uh, but I never finished Persona 5, so 
a man can dream. That is why I'm not touching that game. Is like it, I feel like it would. It, the premise of it is that it's post Persona Five, right? Like so, like. What am I going to do? I read a yeah. Sp- uh, I, yeah, I don't know. I was sitting there like skipping the dialogue, fast forwarding. I was like, what am I doing? Like this, <laughs> like, like I just, I knew within 30 seconds that like, uh, oh no, no. like I yeah. should, I shouldn't have put this on my switch. Um, but, um, you know, but it's, it, it looks really like it's, you know, it's on PC and PS4. I don't know if it's on PS5 as well, but my guess is it looks fucking like, it looks really nice on switch. And my guess it looks even better oh, I bet. on, on yeah. those other yeah. Uh, machines. Yeah. It looks style great is, from everything I've seen. Yeah. Put yeah. Persona 5 on switch. Like, I don't know if I'd finish it, but I'd probably go back to it and, and try it again. Or I guess, perf- I guess perf- put Persona 4 on switch is really what I, you what never, I you never beat four, right? No, never... I played, I played like 15 hours of it on Vita and then right. it fell off it. Um, but, um, Okay. If Rob can't beat Persona 4, then I'm not going to sit and take Who can, myself. honestly? Yeah, <laughs> totally. You Kata, remember you I'm bad at things, and I, d- I refuse oh my to God, do my that's research. Not what I, <laughs> <laughs> that's not what I meant. Um, Kato, did you play anything this week? You want to uh, say anything? Uh, just more Exapunks, really. That game is okay. good, but also yeah. it's weird how I... It, it's I, I took like a computer science class, like one computer science class in high school, and was I like, was hoping that you took one after starting Exapunk. I was like, I don't understand how to talk about programming, so I need to sign up uh, for c- computer science class. No, like I, I took one in high school, and like I always kind of tinker with it randomly. And like, actually, actually, honestly, like my my grad school uh, like thesis project, I ended up coding in three different languages, like bits and pieces that are like obviously very like. I showed it to a coder friend. They're like, this is a fucking mess. What are you doing? <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> good at it even, but, uh, it, it's like weird how what ostensibly is work is really fun. <laughs> Sometimes, um, they yeah. kind of tweak the way they tweak the idea of coding language here to make it simple enough that it's more like, it's more like the puzzle and, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, just, uh, problem solving aspects of coding and not the frustrating, like, uh, this syntax doesn't make any fucking like sense, and the only reason I know that this word is supposed to go here is because I looked up like and dug through a document that's like a hundred pages long or some shit, right? Uh, Listen, man, uh, <laughs> uh, removed from uh, exploitative uh, and alienating, you know, social relations, labor can God. be pleasurable. Right. It turns out <laughs> maybe um, we should do something about that. Which is funny because in the in. <laughs> In the game, uh-huh. you're fucking, yes. it's work, right? It's work, work. Like, you're literally playing a person who's doing work in order to make money, in order to survive. Like, they they need medication that they cannot afford otherwise. Um, which is, I think I keep forgetting about that game because the, like, kind of um, story interludes come pretty quickly, technically. It's like every two or three levels or something else. But those levels take so long sometimes because <laughs> I'm, like, going back and forth between the, the like, instruction pdf in the game and like figuring things out and i'm like oh right there's a there's a narrative here and i'm gonna have to actually i think i'm just gonna go back and watch all of the cutscenes individually once i'm like through it just just kind of string it string it all together but still that game is uh yeah it's 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 just the it struck me how much i'm like i like stopped at a certain point i was like this is sometimes this is like someone's job somewhere. <laughs> um, but I don't think I could do this as a job, honestly, even though I'm having fun with this game. Awesome. Yeah, I, I I'm mad at myself for having dropped off of that. It was one of those things that felt like if I commit to this, my brain will grow. I will right. I will be more fulfilled as a human being. <laughs> I, will, I will have a I will because it's hard. It's like it's it's sort of thinking I don't do very often anymore. That style of of programming <laughs> stuff, and um, uh, the everything about the wrapper that all those that that game is takes yeah. place in is like extremely my shit. Um, it was just was one of those things where I was like, I'm not going to find the time to dedicate to, to myself to learning how any of this works beyond you know the first six or seven levels that you know by the end of that i was like damn this is getting hard so yeah. so yeah i i um, hit one where i had to like double check how math works because it was oh. about like uh <laughs> well, i had to it, yeah <laughs> i had to split Word. i had to split a number evenly and then also get its remainder but without an advanced calculator like the the game the game's internal math only spits back up full full integers and i was like shit right. how did i get that remainder without 
I had to like Google math for a second. It's like, I'm sure I learned this at some point in fucking elementary school. Who the fuck knows? Yeah, I, I, as soon as, a, as soon as I, the iPhone was invented, my brain said, cool, math <laughs> doesn't exist anymore. Um, of course, now I, I have a child and like, there are like a lot, you know, people are like, oh, you have two girls. Like you're worried about like teenage life. And I was like, no, you know, the thing I worry about most having children hmm. is knowing that like they've retaught, how, you know, like changed oh. how they teach math. Yeah. And everything I heard from parents <sighs> in my generation is like your brain is just not going to like it's just so fundamentally different than how it was taught to us in school that you you as the adult have to relearn basic like addition subtraction because it's just a totally different philosophy that's what i worry about is like Mm -hmm. i thought i finally said cool technology solved math for me like i don't i'm not good at it i was never good at it moving on with my life and instead i'm gonna have to like try and teach a small child it and i've i oh god that's gonna be my exapunk is like (laughs) teaching basic (laughs) math math. yeah Yeah. you know what's a foundation that never goes out of fashion Hmm. is uh euclid wow (laughs) okay okay (laughs) Thanks. Can't go what? wrong. Just mm-hmm. start start studying up, Patrick. I can okay. recommend some translations. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also I can't. That would be. Uh, I didn't read Euclid. I couldn't understand that shit. <laughs> um. Also, that's just also all reminded me that like I had to look what I had to look up. Like sometimes if you're playing a puzzle game, you can like obviously you can always look up the the like solution or try to find hints. But what I had to look up here was like a structure of something because the way the game works out is that you don't just have to make your little, like basically it's uh, abstracted by these little like robots that are moving around computer systems that you're programming. Mm -hmm. Um, You don't have to make those little robots do a a thing once you have to do it in a hundred different permutations. So like it has the, 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 the program that you write has to uh, account for uh, the fact that files might be in different locations uh, on these different permutations. Like it's not always going to like, there's no, you have to like uh, account for not knowing what this computer system that you're hacking into actually looks like. Um, which is just a neat way of doing a, a puzzle that is like, there is, there isn't one solution. Like they also include like histograms of like, this is how everyone else's codes, uh, uh, compared to yours with like length and like how many, actions they take and things like that which is always neat to see i'm always like on the like higher end of everything <laughs> it's like wow somebody mm-hmm. <laughs> wrote a, a code here that was like half the size of mine that's fascinating um because it definitely feels like in the moment i'm like getting to like yeah this is as this is as efficient as this can be and i'm never it's never right no um, no i always like <laughs> 12 steps more than whatever yeah. the best person did yeah totally um but yeah that's fun i'm really enjoying getting through that hopefully i hear it gets even harder than so i don't know what what the future looks like but i'm trying to power how does it transcend it? and also become an <laughs> elite hacker what? it's gonna happen oh how does gonna be able to get into that dude's uh bitcoin, bitcoin. Safe and recover okay we got to get money together to buy that bitcoin safe <laughs> Give it to me. How Let's go. I'm ready. I got my Post Netrunner box link. over here. I'm like channeling everything <laughs> cyberpunk and hacking right now. It's all great. <laughs> also, also in in a year, my kids in uh, kindergarten, you can you can teach them math. Kato is great. I'm, sure. I'm, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of our solutions lie in Kato's hands. Um, before we wrap up, Rob, there's one more thing I know you played. Nodding. So nodding. Yeah. Y'all heard of Slay the Spire? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yo, no. let me tell you about good. homes. Enli- enlighten me. A ro- a, a rogue like deck builder seems unique. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Well, now I don't want to share my experience. Oh, no. I, you, I only I only saw the beginning of your tweet thread about this, but no. I did not see the conclusion. Oh, I didn't see the thread at all. Damn. Okay, so I've been too busy. Uh, missing quick tweet thing. Threads. Uh, <laughs> so I got a bunch of purchase notifications on my Xbox account that weren't me. It turns out I gave my old Xbox to my dad. He logged in <laughs> as me. There were some mistakes. Uh, mm. I had to call him and like talk. What do you buy? What do you buy? Can we talk about it? There's an embarrassment. Let's go. Some racing it's games. Bears? Okay. 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 Right. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see a, so, a, th- a through line here. <laughs> oh yeah, no, for sure. Like extremely <laughs> Rob's dad. Type games. Uh, no, we don't so need to worry about that. returning like, any of those things. It's fine. Yeah. We can keep those. <laughs> Just I was add, can we add some family sharing, and you know, it's okay, Dad. Yeah, I got yeah. this. Yeah. Uh, so I basically had to be like, "Hey, uh, you're signed in as the wrong guy. Um, you're not the wizard. I'm the wizard." Um, 
you're the catcher's mitt. Uh, that's you. So like that, that he understood that. But while I was in there, he was like, so wait, so the games I bought you have, but I don't have them. And I was like, yeah, that's correct. But I can just, you know, I can just give you the money and you buy the stuff. And he's like, no, I don't want to do that. Cause you know, it could be a bit like, he was just like, I don't want you to have to go to that trouble. I was like, it's no trouble, but you can't convince your parents. It's no trouble unless it is trouble, at which point they won't take no for an answer. That's mm-hmm. just how life is. But I was like, hey, you could try out Game Pass. Let me show what what, what would my dad like on Game Pass. Because like mm-hmm. he's still mastering the whole like thumbsticks thing, which is a tough skill to pick up when yeah. you're in your sixties. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like and also the Xbox interface is totally foreign to him. You do not understand how <sighs> little intuitive sense any of these interfaces make mm-hmm. if you're just coming from I use a I use a laptop, I use Windows. Xbox completely all the sign and stuff uh, really confusing but anyway I'm trying to figure out like what's what stuff that he's going to play and so I'm like le- leafing through Game Pass and I'm like hey so this buyer seems like he'd dig that I get off the call with him and I'm like maybe I dig that because <laughs> that's so because I'm still in that strategy mode and even on consoles like the strategy offerings are not amazing like I could have yeah. fired up a paradox game yeah. but like yeah. I just don't feel like doing that I'd rather play that that's a mouse. big People. ask like if you're like I'm gonna settle in for some console Stellaris yeah. that's like settling in for like three nights is set in a single night of of gameplay but slay the spire is just what I needed like mm-hmm. it was Hell yeah it was like slipping into a perfectly drawn bath where it's just like, <laughs> oh, this is so comfortable and welcoming. I could just stay in here forever. <laughs> this is your first time um, playing this game, right? Not since uh, the save point we did. Yeah, save point. Uh, right. Where, yeah, so <laughs> where we were sort of figuring out turns, but I was just sort of playing it uh, the other night. And I had a little bit of struggle with the uh, the first character who looks a lot like Griffith Ironclad. from, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, uh-huh. yeah, but then I got the silent, which is kind of the poisoner lady, mm-hmm. and holy shit, like yeah, it was, it, it was extremely satisfying, <laughs> yeah, because every time I got options to be like, okay, what, so what should I do here? I'd already run into the problem where as the knight, I just had a deck that was too big. And I had no control over what was I had no control of what was coming up. And so I would just be like completely unable to mount an offense when I wanted to or defense when I needed to. Um, But this character, there were so many cars that was like draw two, discard one, draw, draw one, draw uh, here, get extra power and draw two. And so there were just tons of things I could get. Plus, I got a bunch of artifacts and some cards that like allowed a selection of innate cards that would just start in my hand. Yep. And so I had these ridiculous combos uh, in this game where I was like just slaughtering people right and left. And it was amazing. It's just like every turn was like the perfect turn in some <laughs> ways where I was like just devastation. And I was like, truly I've, I've crafted the perfect deck. I'm a genius at, at Slay the Spire. <laughs> um, I'm not, I tried the little robot dude <laughs> the next run and the little robot dude required some planning that I did not do effectively. Yeah, like the, I didn't understand the orbs for a little bit. Mm hmm. And I was like, that they seem important, but I don't. They're cool. Uh, they I need to. Uh, There's the artifact. Is that right, Kato? Do you remember the defect? Defect. The defect. That's what it was. Right. The defect. Right. 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 Um, I, I've had a couple of good defect runs uh, over the over the years now. I guess actually, which is wild to think about. Um, <laughs> but uh, but but yeah, I think I, I always come back to the to the silent as my favorite. The silent is like made me love that game and and. You know she's she's simpler than uh, the defect is, and and also the new fourth character who I barely put any time into, who's like a martial arts monk type. Did that ever um, come to the Switch version? It must have, right? If it didn't, that would, it would be such a long time, right? When when, when did that even come out? I have, yeah, because I never I never got to play that that extra class at the end. Last January. Damn, is when it been released. a year. Shit, uh, it was in beta last September. Not not this past September. The September before right. that. So it's been it's been a while since the Watcher, that's that fourth class, uh, came out. So plenty of time for that. Um, I think I came very close though to destroying my run as the Silent in the last boss battle, and I was actually saved because I'd gotten a Void card that cost me one energy, one action, <laughs> because I had, uh, so I had an artifact on me 
that I could pop that filled my hand with shiv cards or mm. infinite blade cards. Right, which give you shivs, which are like zero right. costs. And the infinite damage. blade is a cool little graphic. Like it's somebody like a, like a hawker in uh, like a subway station with their coat open. It's all knives. Like, yes. just, hey, hey, buddy, you want a throwing? You want a throwing dagger? Um, Boy, and do so I. <laughs> I also had a card uh, called Nightmare that triples one of these cards, any card in your hand, and you'll get three of them next turn. And so I did not have enough energy to do Nightmare and use all my infinite uh, blades. And so they just went, they kind of just got shuffled into my deck. But I did use it on one of them. Um, and then I had three infinite blades the next turn around. And I used all of them. And what I hadn't anticipated was that, yes, I would get an, an endless supply of free attacks that <laughs> were doing pretty decent damage. Like every turn now would open with like six free attacks um, that cost no energy and then I could do whatever. The problem is I think if I had, I think if I had not, if I'd had full energy that first turn, I think I might've created a situation where I maxed out my hand limit on free blades I'm not sure I'd have to do the math, but I think there was a possibility that I could have ended up in a situation where I had no other cards in my hand <laughs> except shivs at the start of every turn. And then I couldn't have done anything because they don't let you draw anything. Um, what is the But max? as it was, you, you got a 10-card limit. Really? I don't think I had ever realized that. I've never hit that limit. The way yeah, I was playing know. it, I found that limit real fast with the silent. <laughs> Uh, cause my entire game plan was just like move cards through. Uh, but yeah, but as it worked out, it, it was like, instead it was like six shivs at the start of every turn and then four cards that were pretty awesome. And I could usually use those to spin more actions, uh, out of it. And so it just felt, it felt great. Um, I utterly adore this game and I think it's really priming me for more card battle, uh, card, card driven roguelike. Uh, adventures in the near future. I think um, I'm, sure, I, 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 I'm actually really curious what you would think of Monster Train, a game that I kind of bounced off of for aesthetic reasons, but has a little bit more going on in terms of like positioning and like it's it's sort of tower defensey in some ways. But I think you might click with it a little bit more than I did. Yeah, some of the three MA gang are are talking about the, that game, and uh, I, yeah, I'll give it a shot because like right now my heart is very open. <laughs> um, so I like I, I think I'm ready to board the monster train. But here's the other problem. Slay the Spire is so good. It's so good that there is kind of an element of like, oh, right now I'm just this is perfection. Like I know. Right. I can trust this. This thing is in front of me and it and it just tastes so good. And even when it goes bad, it's kind of fun where it's like, oh, I see. I see now why this is going bad. This uh -huh. this attack is spiraling in some really cool ways. <laughs> yeah. um, it's fun. Would you believe that the people who made Slay the Spire were very big Netrunner fans? <laughs> I had Good heard company. that. Um, yeah, I am they, very, came, they were very big in the Netrunner scene. Well, I think so. this is the thing I also really dig, is that because Slay the Spire is kind of just, um, it doesn't have to be competitively balanced, right? Like you Correct. Can, you yeah, can have right. a game where it's just like, hey, just create endless combos and chains and just fuck up that computer. Uh, that's awesome. That's great. Uh, you would never be allowed to do that. Like if you did this stuff in a competitive game, this is the sort of stuff where it's like, we need to house rule this and we need to <laughs> or we're write never playing the designer. I'm never playing this game with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. exactly. We need to write a complaint to say that this should be banned from tournament play or something. Yes. Yeah. Whereas here it's just like, go off, you know, sure. <laughs> Let's Infinite break, combo. break Let's it however it. you like. Yeah, totally. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you've joined us in the Slay the Spire fan club. Uh, it's it's warm and good here. Um, <laughs> anyone else want to shout anything out before we wrap up? I'm I think I'm good. I'm spent. I'm, we got through this week. This is a long week. You could hear it in my voice that my my voice is dying. So uh, we can't talk about what it was I was talking about all week, but one day you'll find out theoretically. Mm -hmm. So Soon. look forward to that. Uh, hopefully soon. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you all for joining us. We'll be back. Remember, no episode next Monday, but we'll be back for the Friday episode, uh, which, wow, the timing on that will be will be post inauguration. Uh -huh. <laughs> I wow. was looking at Locking. the calendar Let's like, oh, buckle up. Well, well shit. Our the final 21st, Trump huh? era podcast. Well, I don't know about it, 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 Trump and the White House. I, I think the Trump yeah. era will uh -huh. live with us we'll far beyond. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, 
I'm Austin Walker. You can find me on Twitter God. at Austin underscore Walker. Where can people uh, find you, Kato? Why did my my brain went to like the post Marvel movies? Like Iron Man will continue. Donald Trump, <laughs> Trump will continue. Will continue. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, they don't fucking convict that dude. He's running. God. So uh, I'm at a underscore Kato underscore appears. Rob at Rob Zachney. Patrick at Patrick Kopic. Follow everything we do, twitter.com slash waypoint, waypoint.vice.com. Shoutouts to Bowen for letting us use the track Miss You off the EP, Pale Machine. Find out more about